Olá, eu sou a Sofia, do time de Novas Ideias no Laboratório de Ciências para a Educação, EduLab21, do Instituto Ayrton Senna. O conteúdo que vocês vão assistir é uma palestra ministrada pelo professor doutor Oliver John, da Universidade da Califórnia, Berkeley, e membro do Comitê Científico do EduLab. Nesta palestra, o professor John apresenta a organização conceitual do modelo das competências socioemocionais. Por se tratar de um tema que ainda gera dúvidas em todos aqueles que trabalham com educação, é importante que se possa organizar conceitualmente essas competências. Há uma grande quantidade de termos e de definições para os aspectos relacionados a essas competências e em outras linhas de estudo, na educação, na psicologia e em outras áreas do conhecimento, que possuem propostas variadas para esta organização. A escolha por uma dessas formas de organizar não diminui a validade de haver múltiplas abordagens, já que não existe apenas um caminho correto para essa definição. O EduLab 21 optou por adotar um modelo conceitual para as competências socioemocionais, que é um modelo de personalidade que reúne uma ampla gama de evidências empíricas, tendo sido replicado em diferentes países. Espero que a palestra seja produtiva para você. Aproveite! Well, because in the school setting, different schools have different problems. They have to address different children, different contexts, and so they focus on different kinds of socio-emotional skills. So most of these models were not developed as general models, but certain schools focus on problems like creativity. They want to increase the creativity, the curiosity in the children. In another school, there may be issues with violence and crime, and so they need to work on interpersonal skills like empathy and respect and trust. Yeah, so it was fascinating um, when the economists discovered that there are skills that are not just kind of how quickly you can solve problems or how good your memory is, right? These kinds of cognitive skills that allow you to solve math problems. They initially said, oh, here are other kinds of skills and since we don't really know what they are, we're going to call them non-cognitive. But that's not a very good label, because if you think about empathy, that involves my mind, right? That involves me thinking about what is the other person feeling? What are their needs? What are their concerns? So it's not like for these socio-emotional skills, I turn my brain off. They are also part of thinking and uh, experiencing the world. So. Uh, in the business world, they call these skills people skills or soft skills. Now, my feelings are hurt to say these are soft skills and, you know, learning how to do math, that that's a hard skill. I mean, in many ways, you could say empathy is much harder than math, right? It's much harder to figure out and, and, and teach to skills. The term that I like is one that uh, has been used in Canada and they call them transferable skills. That means that you can carry them with you from one context to another. And that's a really nice example because we want our kids to take these socio-emotional skills from school to college or into their marriage or into their work. So these are skills that you can think of there in a little suitcase, right? And you pack them in your suitcase and you take them with you throughout your entire life. So if you want to have a term other than socio-emotional skills, then I would go with the transferable skills. But I like socio-emotional skills because they recognize something fundamental about our schools. And that is that schools are social places, right? You need to get along with teachers and with other kids. And they're also emotional places because lots of emotional stuff happens. If I get a bad grade back, I'm sad. If the teacher doesn't allow me to write the essay about a question that I really like, I'm frustrated or I might be angry, right? If my best friend moves, I'm sad. So those are issues, you know, that emphasize that schools are both social and emotional places, and so those are really good labels for these kinds of skills.
No. I mean, the amazing thing is that we are finally recognizing that these socio-emotional competencies are critical throughout all kinds of important contexts. And so the UNESCO is probably the most important example because they are saying skills are there in general to help us perform tasks and solve problems. And what that means is that the socio-emotional characteristics are also skills because they help us deal with problems, solve problems in domains, not just like education and training, but also when later we have a job, when we have problems in our relationships, in our marriages, with our children, when we need to manage our health, when we worry about well-being and happiness. So those are all domains um, that are critical. And it is in this context that the UNESCO has said that these non-cognitive skills are critical because they help us solve the problems of life. So I sometimes even would like to call them life skills because as I said earlier, they are transferable skills that allow us to be better solvers of issues and problems um, throughout our lifespan. Well, if it, we're thinking of skills, they need to have a certain stability. In other words, that um, there have to be uh, effects of these skills on behavior, on the kinds of feelings that we have, on the kinds of thoughts and cognitions that we have, and they have to be relatively consistently evident uh, over time and situation. So that's one thing, that they are, that, um, they are detectable on a consistent basis. The second piece is that they are also learned, that we can practice them, just like I practice empathy with my kids. And it's something that we do uh, on a recurring basis so that we learn that we develop these kinds of skills both through informal and formal education and life experiences. And then the third piece is that if these are really socio-emotional skills, then they should connect up with important outcomes. And we sometimes say socioeconomic, and what we mean by that, it's not just about making more money when we're um, grown-ups, but um, that it's also important for our relationships, for our citizenship, for our involvement with our neighborhoods, um, with clubs and the civic community. Well, in the early days, there were very smart and thoughtful people who proposed a list of core characteristics. And there's been wonderful work, but the problem is, just like the schools, any individual has their own specific preferences and priorities. And so you often see an emphasis on empathy, on getting along, being respectful, and um, doing you know, as you are told, but then those conceptions forget important things like creativity and curiosity. Uh, often people forget to include engagement with others. And so psychologists realize that no single individual can put together a truly comprehensive taxonomy or framework. And to do that, we have to work together and we have to use scientific principles. So that is an evidence-based approach. And over about 30 years, um, researchers from different laboratories, from different countries, um, with different uh, groups of people that they have studied have made an effort to collaborate and find out whether there is a general taxonomy that we can replicate in different countries. And so the idea of replication is really the critical thing in science that it's not what I think or what you think, but what we consistently find over and over again when we look at these socio-emotional characteristics in different countries and, and settings. So this idea that there is an underlying broad general uh, taxonomy was very critical and 
Amazingly, I actually did not expect that in my lifetime I would see this problem solved, but there is now general consensus that we have these broad domains, five broad domains that we can use to summarize what the core or the kind of the most important of these socio-emotional characteristics are. The idea was that there would be a broad and comprehensive model that would really address all the major socio-emotional characteristics that had been identified and suggested, but that at the same time would have parsimony, that we are not ending up with thousands of different um, socio-emotional uh, skills. And in a way, the, the work went like what we would call today crowdsourcing, right? That different groups all over the uh, world were working together on developing this model. And it has shown that there are five broad domains that we can use to summarize the more specific socio-emotional skills um, that we want to distinguish in the school context. And um, the uh, Brazilian team here has been centered at the Institute um, Ayrton Senna. And the work was started by uh, two Brazilian researchers, um, Ricardo Primi and uh, Daniel Santos, who reviewed all of the existing work and then pulled together uh, questions and items um, that uh, could be used to define these uh, particular skills. And what was wonderful is um, that they didn't just uh, include scientists, they um, uh, studied uh, more than 120 students from uh, public uh, schools, uh, they obtained ratings from um, uh, teachers and uh, got information from school principals so that really the effort here in Brazil was again comprehensive but then focused on a manageable set of attributes. So what we now have are these five broad domains and uh, 17 more specific concepts that we call facets that are summarized in the next slide.